welcome back on campus to a new year um and welcome to the first uh, meeting of the informatics seminar so we are honored today to uh, have our <laughs> distinguished chair speak uh, about the state of the department welcome melissa thank you hi everyone Yay. um this is a this is a really fun talk to give it's the second of this kind I've given because I was uh, my first year in department chair last year and it's fun to watch and see how things change and grow. And um, I'll just, you have to tell me what you think at the end of this, but I collected what I could from each one of you. If I forgot individual things, I apologize in advance, but I tried to collect all I could. And you know what? We're pretty cool. So it's really, it's a really a fun moment to step back and actually try and get a sense of who we are and what we're doing. So what I'm gonna talk about today is give us an overview of where we stand in 2022, 23, and think about all of the individuals and the people and kind of the situated context of what this department is, where we sit in the ecosystem of the university and kind of in a big picture who we are and what we're trying to achieve. So um, I look forward to going through all this with you and then having conversation about it, so. I'm going to go through some people to know, some news at the campus level and school level, department news, a little bit about our structure numbers that we might already know, but it's a good reminder, and then some thoughts about the year ahead. So you may know all these people, or you may not. And I actually realized that we've got a lot of new people in the room and new people joining the department. So I thought I'd start at the very top and give us a reminder of some of our leaders across the uh, University as a whole. So this is Howard Gilman. He's our chancellor. He's the sixth chancellor for UC Irvine as an institution. He started in 2014. And as the chancellor, he's really an outward facing role. So he's here to describe who we are as a campus to the rest of the world and to, you know, try and build up excitement and research money and kind of shape the direction of the university as a whole. Some of the people who work with him are his vice chancellors. Um, this is Pramod, our vice chancellor of research, Tom, our vice chancellor of IT and data, and Doug, who was our wonderful vice chancellor of diversity and inclusion, but he is actually just leaving. He's gonna become the UC system-wide vice provost for academic planning. So these are some top people, both in the university and the system. Many of us have had a chance to interact with them, but probably not all of us. And I will say that across the board, they're pretty interesting people who have a really expansive view of higher education. This is one of my favorite people on campus. This is Hal Stern. I think he has the hardest job of all of us. He is our provost. So uh, while Howard Gilman's job is to look expansively kind of external to the university, Hal's job is to make sure that we run effectively internal to the university. So as the provost, he's in charge of all of the day-to-day -day operations of our budgets, of our strategic choices, our coursework, all of it. And he is a, a statistician, which means that he actually, his home department is in this building here in ICS. And we had the privilege of working with him for several years when he was our prior dean for the School of ICS. So I can say with some degree of authority that he's just a really wonderful person. Uh, he's very good with numbers. <laughs> he's a very straight shooter. And I can absolutely guarantee that he has our best interest at heart as a university. So when you see these emails going around about budget cuts or strategic decisions, I would just encourage everyone to know that those at the top are trying very hard to keep this university on a healthy path for growth. And I don't know, I just like knowing that I trust the person who's making those decisions. That's just me personally. So I just want to give a plug for Hal because I think I, I have a sense he's in the office before all of us and leaves after all of us. And uh, yeah, it's a pretty thankless job. These are some of the direct people that work with Hal. So these are our vice um, provosts and they each are kind of over a different purview of the university as a whole. I've put in blue anyone that has a direct relation to our school or department. So Jillian Hayes is the Dean of the Graduate Division or the Vice Provost of Graduate Education. It's actually odd, but they're the same job. She is also a professor in informatics and the advisor of several of you in this room. So we all know who Jillian is. We're really, really happy to have someone at the helm of kind of directing the current experience and future experience 
of grad students across the university who we know and actually also truly believe has our best interests at heart as graduate students. She is spearheaded, of course not alone, but she spearheaded quite a lot of really productive changes for grad students across campus, including some guaranteed summer funding and things that we hadn't done before. Is everything good? Yeah, yeah, I'm just gonna turn. Okay. Yeah. Then we have Dean Michael Dennett. He is actually Jilly and his counterpart at the undergrad level. So he was in the firing line. Well, that's a very bad metaphor, but he was really kind of out on a limb, maybe we should say, with COVID and trying to figure out how we were going to educate this massive um, population of undergrad students in this unprecedented time of hybrid and virtual education. And he's also doing a great job. Diane O'Dowd is our Vice Provost of Academic Personnel. And that only means a lot to a, a small number of people in the room <laughs> because she's in charge of all the merit and promotion cases for faculty. So for all of us who are faculty here at UCI, this is the office that all our cases go through that really affect our career trajectories. And then Roxy Silver is the Vice Provost for Academic Planning and Institutional Research. So this is a behind the scenes person who is really trying to make sure everything runs smoothly. And that's our, those are people who are, who are there running our campus. And then I'm going to add one more. She's here in the room. <laughs> so this is Randy Gardner, who is also from informatics, but we have the privilege of saying that they are also the uh, UCI Irvine Associated President. So thank you for serving in that role, Reggie. Uh, you're going to have to tell us what it means. <laughs> uh, I believe it's a big deal, and I believe it means a lot to the graduate students across the entire institution. So. Um, we're here to help, I guess, <laughs> and let us know what we can do to help you serve in that capacity. Then going down to the ICS level, if you haven't met him already, this is our Dean Marius Papamafeu. Papa Got that pretty well, I think, after all these years. Um, Dean Marius, which he's okay being called, is starting his second term. He's in his second year of his second term, which means he's about year seven as our Dean. And he has come in and done a lot of wonderful things to both kind of situate us for the next stage of this school. He's a very straight shooter and someone who's really, really lovely to interact with and has a lot of great visions about the school. Heike Rao, if you haven't met, is actually Dean Marius's kind of counterpart on the staff and operation side. So as the assistant dean for the school, she is in charge of really trying to make sure all that our staff functions are running effectively. And again, more of the daily operations of the school. Here are our associate deans. So just like their vice chairs and vice provosts, we have four associate deans. These positions rotate in and out. Uh, as you will see, we currently have our fair share of associate deans coming from the informatics department. So Madhu Reddy is our Associate Dean for Grad Affairs. So this is a faculty position, but they're in the role of overseeing all of our graduate programs for the whole school. So that's informatics, computer science, and, st and statistics. David Redmiles is our Associate Dean for Academic Affairs. And again, this really matters for the people in the room who are faculty, because he is the one who's going to be preparing our cases and helping the school at the school level, helping Dean Mario's move our personnel cases up towards campus when we're up for merits and reviews. And if you don't know this, the UC system is a little bit unique in that all faculty are on a two or three year review cycle, kind of whether we like it or not. Some of those reviews matter a lot because they're things like tenure or you know, kind of important promotions, but whether or not they're a noteworthy promotion in that way, we're still on a merit cycle every two to three years where our cases are reviewed by each other and by campus. This is throughout the UC system. Then we have Gopi. I don't know. How, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to struggle with Gopi's last name. Does anyone know exactly how to say Gopi's last name? Okay, we're just going to say Gopi. Yeah. How is it? Minat. She sure you're hung? Don't tell Gopi. I feel a little bit bad. Uh, but Gopi is our associate dean for undergrad affairs. So he's Madhu's counterpart in the undergrad curriculum and making sure that our undergrads here in ICS have a quality experience. And then Rena Dexter is our associate dean. Oh, I have that wrong. Oh no, for research. That was me having a typo. Our associate dean for research to be there to help make sure that our research portfolio as a school is moving forward. As I noted, we have three departments here in ICS. 
computer science, informatics, and statistics. And these are your current department chairs. We also rotate in and out. And it's a, it's a little bit of an ask. And you, you are asked to serve in this capacity. And then you can choose to agree or not to agree. It's a little bit of a kind of a, a back and forth between the department chairs and the dean of who's going to serve in that role. And the whole faculty has a voice. Actually, the whole community has a voice. And who's going to be the next department chair. And the three of us work together thinking about the school as a whole. <laughs> OK, so now let's move down to informatics, because that's where we are today. We have a few people here in the room that are invaluable to our department and help me on a daily basis. Bill Tomlinson is our vice chair for the whole department. Hi, Bill. Yunan Chen is our vice chair for undergrad affairs. Hi. And Katie Salmon, second boss, is our vice chair for graduate affairs. Hi, Katie. You want to wave real quick for those who don't know the three of you? They're all over here, coincidentally. <laughs> Um, but they do a lot. So they're oftentimes you're the first person you go to for questions under their purview, or that they will be working with me to figure out answers to graduate questions, undergrad curriculum questions, undergrad individual questions. Uh, Bill is single-handedly in charge of our teaching schedule, which is one of the most complex word problems I've ever seen. Okay, next we have our, our staff, which are also just as invaluable, and they're here for the day-to-day -day operations. I would have put everybody's picture up, whether they kind of liked it or not, but I have to say some of these people are very good at not having pictures on the internet, <laughs> which I respect. So uh, so I just put Marty's picture up because I didn't want to somehow be playing favorite with pictures. Uh, but Marty is our department manager. If you haven't met Marty yet, you might be in the wrong group because Marty has a, has a, a finger on so much of what we do in this department as a point person for students and for faculty. And he's just a wonderful, wonderful resource. And I'm glad he's downstairs because he'd probably be embarrassed that I was putting his picture up there. <laughs> but he'll be joining us for our reception. Okay, we have some new role, a new role that I'd like to announce. Lucas, hi Lucas, right there, wave your hand. <laughs> Lucas is serving this year. If you didn't know already, every year that we have as a department level a, a diversity ambassador. This is a funded position for a year. Actually, Gisette and Reggie both served in this capacity in the past. And this is something that we are working with our Office of Equity and Inclusion to try and get out there so that people can understand what our department is, who we are, potential grad students who might be interested in coming can find us, and we can find them. So kind of an external facing person to try to kind of, it's a, it's a strange department, right? It's not one that really is easily categorized. And we want to get the broadest pool of applicants that we can so that we can continue to have these interesting groups of students coming in. And so this is not all on you, Lucas. <laughs> that's, a big, that's a big bar. But we really appreciate the efforts and help of our students who are willing to serve in these capacities to be out there and be our informatics diversity ambassador. And I wanted to put this up here, too, so that if Lucas approaches any of you saying, hey, can you help me? Could you be, would you be willing to talk to a potential applicant or maybe do a fireside chat that um, please say yes, because it's in the service of all of our, of our entire culture and department to have this position be really successful. And we're one of the few departments on campus that actually fund a position of this kind. And I think it's really in the spirit of a true desire to create an inclusive and diverse graduate student population. You can't, you can't actually just ask for that to happen. You have to put you know, efforts behind that. Okay, so as I kind of noted, Lucas's job is supposedly more external, outward facing to try and introduce us to the world. But we also have on the more internal side, Aaron Trammell, who is our current decade mentor. Hi, Aaron. <laughs> um, and I believe that you're looking for student decade mentors right now. Is that true? Yeah, although I, I phrased it wrong, it should be decade representative. Oh, sorry. Okay, student decade representative. That's maybe my fault. So decade is a university-wide program, but we take it quite seriously here in the department. And this is a program that's supposed to be here to help at the internal side, to make sure that we're doing whatever, whatever we can, our best, absolute best efforts to create an inclusive and diverse and kind of welcoming culture for everybody in the department. So if you have any questions, challenges, concerns, Erin is a wonderful resource. And when we get our student decade representatives, they will also be helping in that mission. I'm a representative. Do we have, do we have, they all figured out? No, but I am one. <laughs> Wonderful. Also, another thing that's changing, do we have IGSA members yet? 
Oh. Okay, this is a plug. Instead of an introduction, then this is a plug. So in the in October, IGSA, which is our Graduate Student Association here in informatics, rolls over to new officers and members of that kind. And so we have here. This was last year's members of the members of the board, not just members of IGSA, but leaders. I would is a better term. This is last year's leaders, and we should just say thank you, because <laughs> being the head of IGSA during such a challenging year as last year was, was not without notice. And I'm assuming that there can be a call for new board members soon. So please feel free to bring your name up, to get involved. This is a wonderful, wonderful resources for the students to find each other, to get engaged and create a culture um, that makes sense for them to put on activities. We're here to help. We're here to fund. We're here to be in the background to make sure that you have the capacity to do what you want, but we're not here to like micromanage and tell you what kind of events you should be having. So we really hope that all the graduate students get involved in IGSA. Um, and one of the first things that IGSA is doing this year, although you've probably seen they've already had some coffee hours, but they're gonna, we're gonna host a back to school beach bonfire. This is a picture from last year's batch. So back to school beach bonfire. This is for everybody in the community, meaning students, graduate students, faculty, staff, and families. So anybody that, or you know, friends. So anybody that you'd like to bring that's a close personal friend or family member, please fill out the form that Adriana Burton has been sending out with an RSVP, because we actually do need to know ahead of time who's RSVPing so that we can get appropriate numbers of food and have an RSVP list. But it's really fun. It's pretty chill. You guys like doing the beach stuff? I mean, we do live by the beach, everyone. Mm -hmm. yes. yes, thank you. Here's some more pictures to make it look all wonderful. <laughs> the sunset, some of the people in the room here. Um, for anybody who is a first year entering PhD student, if you have not picked up your fancy informatics sweatshirt, they are available. So um, we should have had them at our orientation day and to be perfect with us, we just forgot. So come on down and get an informatics sweatshirt. You just have to knock on Marty or Marissa or Luzanne's office if you're a first year PhD student or if you somehow didn't get one, anybody in the community can have a sweatshirt. So do you not have a sweatshirt? Okay, faculty are allowed to have sweatshirts as well. So anybody who doesn't have one, just ask. Okay. So that was kind of an overview starting at the very top of kind of who we are, some of the people that we should be aware of. I wanted to give you just a few pieces of school news. So we have our external relations people have been working very hard to put on some events that they think will be of high quality and high kind of usefulness for our students at all levels. And this is across the entire school, undergrad, match, uh, master's, and PhD to help you find internships and jobs and network opportunities that make sense for you, especially if you're not gonna be going in the academic track, but you'd like to make links to industry. So top, top companies are coming. We're talking, you know, the Metas and the Googles and all of this, but also lots of smaller companies that are more OC situated. So at all levels of size. And they're gonna be coming October 11th and 12th. Uh, the two uh, specific events that I'd like to focus on for this audience is that on the night of October 11th, which is a Monday from five to 6.30, if you are a master's student who are interested in networking with these companies, they're having a special reception just for master's students up here in this room, five to 6.30. I hope I got that right. Yes. If you are a PhD student, come the following night, October 12th, they're going to have another networking event just for PhD students here in this room. So master's networking event and PhD networking event. You've been getting emails about this, but I wanted to make it clear that this is not just for undergrads. They're trying to honor that the master's and PhD experience can be different and that you have a different relationship with potential um, employers. They're looking for something different with you because you have more experience and so forth. But it's a lovely time to actually, if you're, you're getting kind of handed <laughs> this one-on-one -on -one interaction with the top companies in the area. So feel free to come. Yes, Katie. Uh, summer internships. Yes. It's early to think about it, but this is the event to go to to try to start to get in the door around those. So even if you're, I know you maybe you're new to our program, but next summer is a great chance to do an internship. So think about, think about that. And I will 
say that a lot of our students do internships. There's lots of reasons to do them, no matter what your career trajectory ends up being. If you absolutely know 100% that you want to end up in industry, do some internships. There's no question. If you're on the fence and you don't know where your career trajectory is going to take you, it still is a wonderful experience. Um, some of these internships pay quite nicely, so it's a good extra summer funding. Um, but either way, you're getting to know people, you're finding different possible career trajectories, and it's a good experience to have. So we have many students doing um, internships that may or may not end up in industry. It's still a valuable experience. Okay. So say what you will about rankings. We, you know, we don't believe them when we're not, we're not high up, but my gosh, it's nice to be high up. <laughs> um, this is actually very, really, really interesting. So Matt and I have been digging into this, Matt's in the corner of our communications head. We believe, can I say this, Matt? Yeah. We believe that there are two undergraduate programs in the entire University of California, Irvine that ranked in the top 10. And they're both in our department. So our game development simulation, which would be our GDIM major, and our software engineering major, these are undergraduate majors, are literally the only two ranked undergraduate majors in the entire institution, according to these 22-23 um, rankings, and they're both here. Thank you. I now look at their website, I'm like, Matt, is it am I right? Are we really, is it really only these two? So um, we've been doing some investigating and that's what we believe. So we're gonna try and push that out a little bit more messaging wise, but it's pretty exciting. They're both great programs. It's not, they don't deserve to be there. It's just pretty exciting that this is it for the entire institution. Okay, so some department news. So now that was kind of school level stuff, now I'm gonna get it. We have a ton of news at the department level. This is where I began. I start to see the richness of who we are and what we're doing. And it's really fun to share with you. So first and very exciting is the moment when a faculty member who's been here moves in their career trajectory from assistant professor to associate professor. This is a big deal because once you hit the associate professor rank, you are officially a tenured member of the academic senate. And this is Stacy Brown. Oh, there she is. <laughs> and we're very, very excited. Um, this this means basically Stacy continues to have all the career mobility she might want, <laughs> <laughs> but now the choice is entirely on her, <laughs> uh, which is a lovely position to be in as an academic, and it's a reward for lots of both hard work and very exciting research. And so we're really happy to have her here for the next stage of her career and to see what we do next. We also have a brand new person coming. He's not here in this room because he's not yet here with us. But starting January 1st, we're going to be having a new professor of teaching. Mohammed is going to be working in the software engineering space and doing some of his teaching in the software engineering undergrad and graduate programs and some of his teaching in the MSWE, which is our professional program in software engineering. Um, he is like, I have to say, there were a lot of qualified candidates for this position. But if we had written a, a job search description that said exactly the kind of qualities we needed, he fits it to an amazing degree. He has already actually been behind designing and launching a professional master's in software engineering at the University of Calgary in Toronto. He also has been throughout his entire career dedicated to pedagogical questions around diversity in software engineering. So he has, he has a, a whole slew of grants and exploring new ways to teach software engineering with that focus. So it's, it's, it's perfect. And he's very excited to be coming here. So we're excited to have that him joining us in January. And finally, who here has met Andrew Schrock? Well, that makes me so happy. That means you're using his, this resource. So this is our second year working with Andrew Schrock. We are going to continue. We have committed with him, and he's committed to us, because of, obviously it's a two-way interaction, for at least three more years. I don't see any end in sight unless Andrew decides that he this isn't working for him someday. But we're going to continue to spend actually a fair amount of our discretionary budget towards employing him to be a personal writing coach for our PhD students. It's a it's we are literally the only department on campus that does this. And I have heard enough positive things from all of you that I have faith that he is an actual valued resource that truly will help you on your writing journey. 
that helps you as individual, you know, emerging scholars. It helps your advisors and faculty because everybody is being brought up by the one-on-one -on -one writing support. And if any of you in this room think that you're the only one that struggle with writing, you are 100% wrong. I would venture to say that there is less than 1% of us, <laughs> if anyone who doesn't struggle with writing. So I wanna normalize the idea that writing is something that is the currency by which academics live and not easy. And we all have our own struggles. And so whatever supports we can give to make this realistically um, something that you can do while you're here, that's a, that's a big, that's a big ask of Andrew, <laughs> but I do believe that he's been actually kind of uh, meeting that ask, given the feedback I've been hearing from you. He's also organizing groups for comps writing. He's been, has a whole suite of webinars that he, um, that he designed last year that are on the Canvas space for students. Anything else, Katie? Now, the only thing I would say is if you, if you feel like there's a support you're not getting, just let me know. There may be an interest in like a dissertation writing group. You know, this year he's going to try to pilot the comp writing group. That's a sort of new piece. So let any, if you're interested in something like that, let me know. And he's very open to yeah. trying to figure out how to better support you also. And we kind of work with him on an hourly. We, we have a, a minimum of hours per week that we work with him, but that's flexible. So we can go up if there's demand and he's able to do it. Wonderful. Okay. Also, back to some of our kind of outward cool news. The GDIM, which is the Game Design and Interactive Media Program that we, we just noted was one of the two that got ranked by US News Report, has also been receiving some local kind of logs. This is Constance Benkler, also right here, who is currently the steering committee chair and I'm not going to say single-handedly because I know you've had help, but, <laughs> but has also been spearheading really taking this program off the ground and trying to make it to be the best kind of holistic idea about all the different aspects of game design that we can be teaching our undergrads. Um, and it was recently recognized by the um, Greater Irvine Chamber of Commerce uh, as a distinguished program and the Distinguished Educator Award for Technology. So this is Constance and Hal Stern accepting that. On a related but not the same note, <laughs> uh, Kurt Squire and Constance Steinfeller together have been reinvigorating the Games Learning Society Center. And they had their first conference last summer that I've heard from multiple angles was an incredible success. So we're continuing to build kind of the energy behind the Games Learning Society aspects of our program here. You guys are doing it again this summer? I'm just laughing about that photo. <laughs> you look ridiculously cute, don't you? <laughs> called it the I think we should have matching stuff. <laughs> yeah, you could have you could have matching satin bomber coats or something. Can you pass those out at this year's conference? I bet your attendance would go away. Yeah. Go through the roof. I want a satin bomber jacket. Um, we also have some changing and new things. Does this look familiar? <laughs> this is your fifth floor right now. And this is not going to look like this for very much longer. I wanted to give you all a heads up on why we're sitting through that noise downstairs. We, um, we, we have an endowed center here at the department called the Create Center. Paul Dorish is the director and Amory Kuiper right over here is the associate director. And the Create stands for the Center for Responsible, Ethical, Accessible, and Technology. Is that right? Responsible, ethical, accessible technology. I had it right. This is good. This is a school wide center, but it's housed here in informatics. And it really has the potential to be a bridge for so many people, both here in our department, here in our school, across campus, and in the broader community of people interested in the future of a world in which technology is not going away, obviously. But how do we make sense of it, design it, implement in such a way that kind of upholds our goals for humanity? but it needs a home. So right now we have people behind it. We have some activities behind it. We have money behind it. This was generously endowed by the Vincent Steckler and his family, but we didn't have a home. So we are taking what was kind of a dead space in the middle of the fifth floor that really, I mean, used to have to go in there with lock and key to get your mail and that was about it. So right there in the middle of the floor, it's a perfect location. And we're going to reimagine it as the uh, Create Center home. It's going to be, we're bumping. So here you see the GLS. 
area, we're bumping this out to be just like this side. So there's going to be windows and it's going to have light and you're going to see it. It's going to be a big, beautiful room that's going to be for the Create Center, but it's going to be a resource for all of us. There's going to be some place for meeting. There's going to be some place for lounging. There's going to be some place for working. So I'm really excited that we're finally doing this. This has been in the works for over a year, but you know, kind of timelines for construction, we don't have a lot of control over. And of course they decided to start it on September 19th, which just happened to be the first day of the quarter. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we, we get to start this quarter with a bit of noise and disruption. They are gone every day by 1 p.m. Just so you know, they, they work early hours on purpose to try and be as least disruptive as possible. Also, we have some other areas of the department that were recently renovated, but I wanted to just, you can poke your head in at some point. I don't have pictures of the new accessibility lab, which is the fifth floor kind of around the corner over there. We renovated two rooms for Anne-Marie Piper and Stacey Graham to kind of build a truly accessible workspace. So this is gonna be a lab that is not just, it's not just for studying accessibility and technology, the lab itself is also equipped to be a place where you can bring in people and have research studies and to be as fully accessible of a room as possible. So we're trying to, to kind of do both of those things and we're really excited to see how you end up using the space. It just got finished, so it's not fully moved in yet, um, but there's gonna be more and more activity going on there. Similarly, on the sixth floor, Another recently finished but empty space, <laughs> as you can see, is going to be an expansion. We already had a little bit of lab space for our health informatics group. We have an expansion of a, a new space. It's going to be for Elena Agape and Mindy Ready. And this is going to be, this is like the clean, empty version <laughs> of a lab space for continuing kind of growth and research around um, health informatics. So we've been doing a lot of construction. This is pretty exciting. It's time to update some of our spaces and to make sure the spaces are appropriately usable for us. So who are we, what kind of work are we doing and do we have the space to do that work? So this is some, this is in the kind of spirit of that. Uh, so go ahead, walk around, poke your head in, see some of our new spaces. If you're associated with these labs, I hope you enjoy the new spaces. I hope they move from being kind of spare looking empty environments to welcoming work environments very soon. Okay, so to transition to, just so you know, there's a lot of cool projects that are going on in this department. I only picked a few. It's just a little bit of a flavor of the kinds of things that our faculty and students are up to. But here's a couple of the cool projects that I just kind of cherry picked up. Katie Salem has become part of a really unique collaboration, taking her work on connected camps um, and experience camps and Minecraft and children to think about what would it look like to create a Minecraft server specifically for grieving children? How would this be a space that could potentially be a welcoming and a therapeutic space for children in pain? And this is something that a lot of children are facing in today's day and age. So the working with practitioners and the UC Berkeley Institute of Human Development, I believe you piloted this last summer, right, Katie? Is it gonna? It's running. It's running. So it's pretty exciting. On a separate note, many of our um, classes, this is both our master's classes and our nerd classes, do capstone projects. We have some very dedicated capstone faculty here, including Darren, who's right there in front of me, and Hadar, who couldn't be here today. Uh, oh, he's right there. I just didn't see you in the glare. Hi, Hadar. Hey, Hadar is right there. <laughs> um, who are shepherding different groups of students to be having hands-on um, experiences that really both benefit the students and the people that they're working with. This was one capstone project that came out of our MSweet program, which is the Master's of Software Engineering. Working with the UCI um, hospitals to develop kind of update a very uh, old and not working well database <laughs> with the UCI Elder Abuse Forensic Center. So they were uh, they were updating an outdated referral system, and my sense is that it was very much appreciated and a very practical capstone project that really helped people. And finally, Krista Lopes, one of our software engineering professors, has really dove headfirst into the idea of what is it like to create virtual environments that work for people. So she's gone from creating open sim environments for classroom teaching to now actually working with others on mid space, 
which is the idea of a fully kind of um, virtual environment for online conferences and trying to figure out what that actually looks like is we've all been struggling with the idea of what does it mean to attend a conference virtually? What is that experience? What is replicated and not replicated from the kind of in-person experience? Those are some cool projects, yeah. Okay, now there's a lot of awards and distinctions that are always fun to talk about. Paul Dorish, uh, our, one of our esteemed professors here in the department, was named an American Association for the Advancement of Science Fellow. This is absolutely not, not a big deal. <laughs> it is a big deal. Um, only a few people are nominated each year, so yay, Paul. Unlike certain fellowship organizations that are really about a discipline in specific, this is the, uh, the AAS is really scientists, engineers, and innovators. So it's a kind of a multidisciplinary space of people who've risen to the top of their field and want to be recognized as being leaders. So they don't want to be recognized. We want to recognize them as being leaders. So we're very proud of Paul. Also, one of the biggest distinctions we can give to esteemed faculty are to actually give them honorary degrees. We say, you're so special and so amazing and you've done so much in your career that we'd like to kind of honor you with the degree from our institution. And Judy Olson was just chosen out of over 150 people. I think there's only four people that were chosen. They are nominated by faculty at the institution. So by faculty at Northwestern as to be received an honorary degree from Northwestern. Uh, she's recognized for a pioneering work in human computer interaction. For any of you who are in the space of human computer interaction, who came here because you want to study human computer interaction, you have probably come across her name. She's outstanding. And I will say, this is just a small plug, <laughs> but when I was about 21, I was a master's student at the University of Michigan, and I took a class from Judy, and it really did shape where I ended up going from there on out. So I found old papers that she'd created. <laughs> and I took some pictures of them when she retired. But yeah, she had very quality feedback on my papers. She did, absolutely. It was no half-ass feedback from Judy. No, no, no. <laughs> also, I want to recognize that here in the school, B. Marios uh, gives awards to people who've really risen to the top for specific activities they're doing for the school as a whole. Constance Stein Cooler won the Dean's Award for Excellence in Undergraduate Teaching last year. And again, this is during a time when teaching has been very, very challenging. So we're very proud of Constance. Jillian Hayes also had a very special award this year. Another one of the cool things that can happen to us. How many papers do we write that we have no idea what happens to them? Realistically, it's a fair number. So we put papers out into the world, it's what we do. We said earlier, our currency is around writing. Um, if you don't love what you're writing about, you probably, you know, that's the first, the first goal is that you're excited by what you're writing about and you should be loving it, but you don't ever know if it has any impact. So every once in a while, a word like this comes along, which means that this is a paper, the 21, 21 paper, in fact, or a paper that's over 10 years old that has been shown to have lasting impact in the space. So Jillian's 2010 paper, which is really studying the state for disability studies as a source of critical inquiry for the field of assistive technology, has been, has been recognized as something that really opened up a new space of inquiry that has become very, very important and very rich in um, CSEW and HCI. So that, I think that's just exciting to know that your, your work has impact. So these are particularly exciting words, okay? Also, back to the focus on teaching is something that we truly, truly care about. This is from the campus level. Roger Crooks received the Inclusive Excellent Teaching Award. Um, he, in his kind of acknowledgement of this award, really, really called out a few of his PhD students who were the TAs. Um, it was Benedict Turner and Adriana Burton for really helping think through a reimagining of the syllabus for our 161 class, which is technology and society, and really thinking about what are the hard questions that students want to wrestle with and how do we wrestle with them in a kind of productive way around technology and race, technology and violence, technology and institutions, et cetera. Um, and so this was recognized by the campus as an example of the kind of teaching that we wanna foster. And we're very proud of that. Similarly, Stacey Brandon was also given a campus-wide distinction as a Digital Accessibility Innovator Award. 
So this is the idea that there are people out there who are really trying to understand and create the tools that make this not an accessible world on paper, but accessible world in practice. And when we move more and more into the digital world, what it means to be accessible is becoming more and more nuanced and sometimes difficult to understand and bring into visibility. This is not the same as like building ramps to go into a building, right? These are things that are subtle and we might often not notice when the digital tools and applications that we're creating are not accessible to people. There's a lot of invisibility there that has to be brought to the service and Stacy is doing a lot in that space. Okay, so moving to some of our exciting students. Nika Noor is a PhD student here in informatics, got one of the most prestigious awards possible <laughs> in our space, which is the Google Fellowship for her continued study of deep fakes and misinformation. We're incredibly proud of Nika. Um, she has been someone who has not only come to this program with a really clear passion for what she wants to study and what is interesting, but she's also kind of out there making connections, applying to fellowships, trying and trying and trying. And I mean, I know that there are a lot who've mentored and helped her in this room, but I really applaud her kind of focus and excitement and dedication to her work and finding a way to have it recognized. She also was named, oh, look, I have another typo here, sorry. She was also named one of the 30 under 30 in games in Forbes last year. One of our very recent graduates, Nayara, just received kind of the year after you get this award, the year after you, you completed your dissertation, she got the esteemed iSchool Doctoral Dissertation Award for the best dissertation that was submitted across all iSchools. Um, data work and data tracking, technologies and fertility care, holistic approach. Since I was actually on her dissertation committee, I can say with authority that it was an amazing dissertation because <laughs> I read it <laughs> and I read it closely. Um, and she did a, a variety of studies that really look at the way that data tracking around fertility affects the people who are being tracked and how they engage with those tracking technologies in ways that have unexpected consequences for reaching their actual kind of mission of trying to conceive. Um, and I found out that I can say this, right? And Myra is taking a job at Georgia Tech as an assistant professor. So we're very happy for her. <laughs> Emory Edwards received a public impact distinguished fellowship for their work on inclusion and accessible um, technology and centering people with disabilities in design process. Excellent work and we're happy for Emory. Lucy Pei became an art scholar which is a local chamber of commerce uh, group here in Orange County that gives quite a bit of money to students to kind of pursue their research interests. It's a volunteer women's organization. Benedict Olgano got an inclusive excellence fellowship and a residential fellowship on IT for change. And Shi Lu was the ICS Steckler Family Endowed Fellowship for research that pr promotes women in technology. And Maria Anderson Coto, Coto received the Rosavio Goldero Valencia Graduate Award here in informatics for people who are doing research from a Latin American context. These are all these, by the way, all these fellowships come with money as well as prestige. <laughs> and it's a one of you, I just want you to know that they're out here, our students are getting them. They both reward exciting research is what we wanna do. They elevate the profile of exciting research, which is what we wanna do, but they also fundamentally support grad students, which is also what we wanna do. Okay, so those are our distinctions. Moving, one of the other things that faculty are most focused on is finding the appropriate resources to fund what are some very cutting edge and exciting research projects. Not every research project is gonna get funded. We do research for the sake of doing research. We do research for what we are personally excited about. We do research that we think is going to change the world. But along that path, we oftentimes apply for grants, <laughs> which help us with a kind of wind beneath the research. They help us fund our graduate students. They help us actually with the research endeavor. So we have quite a few exciting grants that came through our department this year. So recently three, I really love this grant by the way, because these are, if you don't know these people, Stacy is in the more informatics side of the department. And Sam is a car more on the software engineering side of the department. So the idea that they're collaborating together and getting such a high profile grant is very exciting. So the three of them are PIs 
on a grant to look at automated software um, engineering techniques for improving accessibility. So how do we think about accessibility when it comes to coding and how do we design tools that will enhance that? Elena got an NSF grant for curating and representing mental health data to support therapists in the idea of personalized care. So as we get moving more and more into the idea that the mental health can be something that can be solved through virtual interactions with mental health providers, what does that look like on the back end and how do we support that mission? Kylie Pepler is doing all kinds of interesting things on recrafting and rethinking computer science education and got several large grants working with the Connective Learning Laboratory. Um, but this is one that I just thought was really interesting about recrafting computer science and how could a loom, a device that's used to weave cloth and tapestry, enhance computational thinking and broader participation in computer science for higher education. So this is a, a grant around creating a new course and a new curriculum for teaching students about uh, coding and technology. Yudan Chen got two awards this year. Um, the first one here is Designing Health Tracking Data Technologies for Children. And then a large award as part of a collaborative effort with myself and some colleagues that we have at Arizona and George Mason University. We're looking at understanding the present and assigning the future of risk prediction for firefighters. Get to work. We're going to work with fire departments. I know it's going to be really cool. <laughs> We're super excited. Yeah. Yeah, it's very hot. <laughs> um, but we're interested in a situation where the idea that predictive analytics, thinking about where how they're used on the ground, and a situation that actually we want to get beyond a lot of really interesting research that looks at predictive analytics in situations that are more human centric, like sentencing, policing, child services, and be looking beyond that to thinking about kind of where the humans in the environment interact, and thinking whether or not there's a role of predictive analytics here that could benefit the work and society. Let's see. Bill Tomlinson and Andre Vanderhoek are um, working together on a study and engaging students with complex topics through knowledge graphs. So thinking about how are we teaching software systems design and software engineering in a new way. Andre is also working with collaborators in Colorado College about distributed fragmented software design meetings. So how is it that people are actually gonna design software from a distance? So getting into the idea of hybrid work, what does that actually look like? for software engineers. How are they actually going to create that code from a distance? Is there anything else I should say about your grant, Bill? Um, it's for uh, sustainability science. That's what I was so going to say. General education, sustainability science, using knowledge graphs for that. So general education, really thinking about sustainability science. Thank you. I knew I was missing something key there. And Sam, I have to say a, uh, oh God, there's so many typos on here. This is a problem. Sam's name is not Mavic, it's Malik. So we should save that. Um, but Sam really helped us as a department getting behind an effort to get a GAN award. GAN awards are not to help us at all. Us being faculty, they are to help students. So we have a new award of $1.14 million to support graduate students in the department. And Sam is the person who spearheaded that grant, will be distributing that grant, and who did all the background work to make that grant happen. So thank you. Um, the focus on this GAN award is on cybersecurity, um, which, but we broadly construed, can support very many of our grad students. So thank you, Sam. Okay, now this is what I know you all wanna know, which is, I went to the informatics department. I got a degree there. What's going to happen to me next? <laughs> and so I did a little background work. These are just students who have graduated in the last three to four years. And this is a list of all of the, some of the various appointments they have. I don't know if I got every single one, but I tried to get as many as I could find. The various academic appointments. So we have students, as I was saying, from Georgia Tech to University of Maryland. There's a whole list of prestigious schools here. These are people who are either taking positions as assistant professors in tenure track institutions or as postdocs that are going to be, you know, bumping them up to the next stage of their career. And you can see this is all kinds of uh, kind of departments and schools that were very highly esteemed that we like to be kind of in the same milieu with, and we're very proud of our um, graduates. But that's not it, because a good 50% of our students take very exciting and high profile jobs in industry. This is one of my favorite things about this department, that there is not a clear one single trajectory. 
that we have equally healthy academic trajectory and industry trajectory for your kind of long-term careers. So this is, again, only the last three to four years-ish, students who have taken high-level jobs in industry, um, everywhere from Blizzard to Meta to Google to Microsoft Research, Reddit, PlayStation, MGM Resort, Samsung, Salesforce. You can see all of them. And these are people that we know. <laughs> there are people so that recently went through our program. So there are also people that if you'd like to reach out, find out more about internships, that we can call on them. They're usually quite generous with their time. Okay, in our last few minutes, I'm just gonna say, you might already know this, but we're a complicated department that has several departments. We've got an undergraduate and a graduate side. On the undergraduate side, we have four different majors. These two being the ones that were ranked so highly by U.S. News and World Report, these two being also very good. And the graduate side, we have two different PhD programs, informatics and software engineering. And then under each of those, we have two different master's programs. One is a research master's. For those of you who are in the MS programs, we really hope and expect you to be here to learn the craft of research. You're taking classes with PhD students. You have to do some sort of final thesis as a master's student. This is really a degree to get you moving in a research career. Whether or not you go into academia, we don't care, but that's the kind of nature of this degree. Whereas our professional masters, those are kind of side programs that are really for taking people from one point in their career to the next point in their career, right? So it is an educational experience for sure, but it's less about research and more about what are the skills you need to take to the next part of your career. So we have a master's of software engineering design, a master's of human computer interaction design. Here's some numbers of each of those programs. So you can see the totals. We have about 100 PhDs right now in the program. We have, you know, in the 30s for our research masters, and we have well over 100 of our professional masters. This is a current snapshot. And of those professional degrees, we don't talk about them a lot. They're very cool. And for those of you who are involved with our professional degrees as faculty or as staff or as students, I just want you to know how proud I am of our professional degrees. This is because we are one of the few places that we really have an exciting opportunity to train professionals in a way that's needed. Right? We're not just doing these degrees for the sake of it. These are markets that really need qualified professionals and we're able to kind of provide that educational experience in a way that I'm really proud of. Our M suite, just graduated their second cohort. Their third cohort is 46% female. For software engineering, this is no small feat. We're very proud of this, and it's something they're going to continue to focus on. Krista is our the director, and Connie Chang is the program director. They're doing great stuff. Similarly, our MHCID, which is the Master of Computer Inter Human Interaction and Design, they just graduated their sixth cohort, so they're in their seventh cohort, which is 69% female. This is our most established. Um, research, uh, professional pro program in the school, and one of the most in the campus, actually. We're one of the, the beginning of this kind of move towards professional degrees. It's seen as highly successful across campus. We just got reviewed, and we got reviewed at, at the highest level of approval. I have people whispering in my ear from all over, like I'll be walking my kids to the park, and they're like, don't you have that degree in your program? <laughs> because it's getting a really strong reputation, um, both for the quality of the program, the quality of the graduates, et cetera. Steve Hossaflick is a program director, and Anne Ruth Breaker is the faculty director. Okay, so just a few, just to say, that was lots of information. It was all the details, all the announcements, but I wanna take a step back. First of all, this is a moment we're here together. Please come back. <laughs> come back to see people other than me and come back for the more substantive research talks that we have lined up. We are having fewer talks this year on purpose because we really believe that people are a little burnt out. We know that, but we equally think it is very important for us to get back together as a community. And one of the times and places we can do that is with our Friday seminars. We will continue to have receptions after the seminars and every reception except for today is gonna to be out there. And I'll tell you why today's is different in a second. But you can see we have a lovely list of people coming. You'll get email reminders on Mondays. There's posters around campus. And Elena has done an excellent job of trying to get kind of the variety of people and backgrounds and research interests represented in our seminar series. So thank you. OK, so this is a slide that I had last year. And I thought about taking it away. And I decided absolutely not, because we are still 
in an absolute moment of change. And I think that it's important as we get back in the groove of being a department, of doing our work, of doing our research, of educating our students and each other, that we don't forget that we have and are still living through just an unparalleled moment in history. And the more we can just accept that and kind of face it together, the better we're all gonna be. So we are still in a time of uncertainty. We are still figuring out what it means to live in a time of a global pandemic. We are now facing international war. We're still in a time of political upheaval, social upheaval, and both. And I think it's important that it's not either one of us, but all the groups in our community, our faculty, our students, our staff, are still trying their best. We still are scared. We still care about the bigger questions around social justice in the world. And we're still trying to figure out what it means as individuals to live in this time. And I just, I just think it's important that we don't forget that. So I wanted to leave on that note, but I also wanted to say that I am so proud to be part of this department. I've, this is now my second year as chair and you see different things differently as chair. You're here, you have a different perspective. You haven't changed, I haven't changed, but all of a sudden I'm elevated to try and see things differently. And what I see is a really amazing group of people and everyone, and this by I mean the students I teach, the faculty that I meet with, the staff that I'm weekly, daily meeting with to try and figure out how to run this place the most effectively, are striving to be excellent scholars and people. And I see so many little, honest, genuine attempts to make this department as inclusive of a community and as welcoming of a community as possible. We're gonna fail, right? There's gonna be things that we do wrong. There's gonna be people that intentionally or otherwise offend other people. There's gonna be institutional factors that really do create a space of racism. It's, that's inevitable. But if we don't continue to try and find the right people to turn to, to be brave about the conversations that we're willing to have, and to you know, have the supports for students and people in need when we can, then we're not gonna get anywhere. So I do see that and I hope you guys do too. Also, one of the things I think makes us unfortunately a little bit unique is that I see a, a continual priority of education. We really care about how we educate people. We really care about what does it mean to have an actual online class that works or a hybrid class that works. We had a faculty meeting this week. Immediately the conversation was, okay, how do we do this in a way that actually supports students, not what's easiest for you as faculty members? So again, we're gonna fall short. It's very hard to teach in today's environment, but I want everybody in the community to know how much the faculty care and are trying creative and unusual attempts. Um, our next faculty meeting actually is gonna be one with the Division for Teaching DTEI. Division for Teaching, Learning, Excellence. Excellence. What is it? Excellence. Excellence and Innovation. So we're having people from DTI come in and talk to us and help us brainstorm and help us figure out you know, what we could be doing better as teachers. So I do think that's really important. And, and this is where we're gonna go next downstairs. But we do really, really cool stuff, mm. right? We are in a department and in a, a research space that is addressing some of the most important fundamental in hard, complex, and critical social questions for the future. Technology is not going away. Humanity is figuring itself out. <laughs> and we are here to try from all kinds of individual angles to bring these things together for the future of society. It's pretty amazing. Um, and I'm gonna invite you to come downstairs in just a second. And we're gonna do an unveiling of an interactive art exhibit. That, uh, that really tries to call upon the higher visions that this department stands for. And you'll see what that is in a second. But before we go, there's a couple of quotes that I really love. John Dewey says that education is not preparation for life. Education is life. This is a life we need to be living and we get to do that. And that is actually an incredible privilege. And that a mind that is stretched by new experiences can never go back to its old dimensions. And I just love that idea, because if we're not stretching our own minds and the minds of people around us, then we're stagnant. And I really hope we never get to that place. Okay, I'm gonna skip. Well, this one, I don't know what you think of Steve Jobs, but I actually like this quote <laughs> because 
I don't know if you all know this about me, but in my life, I'm not department chair. I actually study organization, but I study work. <laughs> and the reason I study work is because years and years ago, a professor said to me, you know where people live their lives, Melissa? They live their lives at work. Your identity, your time, who you're around. Yes, you all should have lives outside of work. I absolutely don't believe that you shouldn't. But just the very amount of time and energy and resources we put into our professional lives is pretty impressive. And so if we don't find a way to make our own workspaces for ourselves a place that we're satisfied, it's very hard to live a satisfying life. So. Okay, now I'm gonna enjoy you doing this. This is Jesse. Jesse's waiting for us downstairs. He is an artist and a designer. He does big interactive art displays. He's a professor here in our School of Arts. And he generously worked with me to create an interactive art exhibit for informatics that you will see he's gonna give us some instructions. You don't have to do anything. <laughs> the interactive part is totally by choice and you can interact with it today or any day you want. Um, but we're gonna take it down and Jesse's gonna to talk to us a little about what he created. And we have a reception waiting for us. So thank you all for your time. And uh, yeah. And we'll see you next year. So do all kinds of cool things so that I have just as good of a talk to give next year. <laughs> Do I hang? Do I do I hang up? You can carry on. But do I hang up from Zoom? We'll, we'll hang. Bye, everybody on Zoom. Thanks for coming.